To get started, I am going to be using one can of evaporated milk. This is a 12 ounce can. You could also use whole milk or heavy cream, but I like to use evaporated milk. I'm also going to be warming this in the microwave for around a minute or so, or until the temp reaches 105 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the perfect temperature for proofing dry active yeast. Okay, I've also dissolved one teaspoon of sugar in my warm milk off camera, and I'm now I'm going to be adding two and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast. I'm going to sprinkle it into my warm evaporated milk and allow it to activate over the course of five or seven minutes or until you start seeing your milk get foamy and bubbly. Okay, so my yeast is activated so now I am ready to start combining all my ingredients to make this dough. By the way, as always, the ingredients and measurements will be located in the description below this video. Okay, so in a large bowl, I am going to add 600 grams or five cups of bread flour. And I do suggest you weigh your measurements to get a more accurate result. And you could also use all-purpose flour in this recipe. The difference is bread flour has a higher protein content, which produces more gluten, which in turn creates an airy, chewy bread or dinner roll. So if you don't have bread flour, use all-purpose flour. You can get almost the same result. I just like the texture of bread flour when making this dough. Okay, so I'm just going to whisk this flour just to get rid of any lumps and to make it easier to add my other ingredients. Next, I'm going to add a third cup or 40 grams of dry milk. Now you're wondering why add dry milk when you added evaporated milk? Well, the dry milk has like this malt milky flavor that I like adding to my dough. So that's why I go for that. I'm also going to be adding one cup of sugar or 100 grams of sugar. And I do want to mention again, weighing your ingredients will give you a more consistent dinner roll texture, especially when you're following a recipe. Okay, next I'm adding one and a half teaspoons of salt or seven and a half grams of salt. Okay, next I'm going to be adding one egg. And I do want to mention, bring your egg to room temperature. This will just create a more conducive environment to get the yeast going in your dough. So I brought my egg to room temperature. This is one large egg and I am just going to scramble it on the side in the bowl and add it to the rest of my ingredients. Okay, so next I'm going to be adding one tablespoon of oil. And now goes in my activated dry yeast and evaporated milk mixture right into the bowl. So what I'm going to do is just work the mixture, combine everything well, but I'm keeping it in the bowl. And eventually I am going to turn this out onto a work surface and work in the last ingredient, which is butter. But I'm gonna show you something that I find very helpful when I'm not using a stand mixer. I'm going to be kneading this by hand here in a minute, but if you're using a stand mixer, you don't have to do this step that I'm talking about because all of the work is gonna be done in your stand mixer with the dough hook. You're going to knead it on a medium speed, medium to low speed for 15 minutes. But if you are like me, and I don't want to pull out my stand mixer. And I actually like kneading dough. I like taking the time and kneading my dough. It's a labor of love, in my opinion. So I'm going to mix this dough. And you can already tell that, you know, with this bread flour, it toughens up quick because of the extra protein and the gluten that starts working itself in the dough. So I'm mixing everything in this bowl. 
and I will eventually turn this out onto my counter and work in four tablespoons of butter. But after that, I'm going to place it back in the bowl and just let it rest. So at this point, again, I'm just putting down the silicone mat because I don't want to lose the sticky tacky dough all over my counter or my work surface. So I'm going to put down this little mat and I will be folding in four tablespoons of unsalted butter. And I'm going to take some of that butter and actually spread it on the mat because again, the dough at this point is so sticky and tacky. If you've never made this dough, you're going to think, what in the world kind of recipe is this? This is a disaster because it gets everywhere and I'll show you what I mean. Now you are probably wondering why I just didn't work in the softened butter or melt it and work it into the rest of the ingredients in the bowl. Well, that is a good question and you probably could do that, but I am a creature of habit and I've been making this dough for a while now and for some reason, I just, I don't know. I just find this method just stuck in my head and this is the way I do it. So at this point, I'm scraping out all of this dough onto my mat and I am just going to fold and knead in this butter. And this opportunity will allow me to start working that gluten, which is what's going to give us a chewier, airier texture to the dinner roll. So just with my clean hands, I'm going to scoop up the butter and place it right on top of this dough and just start working it in. Now I'm not going to go crazy and knead. I just really want to work in the butter and then I'll show you what I do next. And this actually helps the dough be less sticky when it is time to really knead and work the dough. So what I want to mention. At this point, I'm working in the butter. It probably looks like my dough is ruined. It is not, it just goes through these weird stages. But after I mix in this butter, it's gonna take all of five minutes. I'm going to place it right back into the bowl. I'm not, this is not the, the kneading, crazy kneading stage. I'm just mixing in the butter. But I'm going to place it into the bowl that I originally mixed it in, cover it and let it set for 15 minutes. Then it will be, a better texture and less sticky and I can actually knead and work with it without losing it all over my work surface because it's a very tacky sticky dough in the beginning stage. So I'm setting it aside and if you're using a stand mixer, this is not for you. Skip this step, do everything in your stand mixer. But if you are kneading by hand, allow the dough to rest 15 minutes before you truly start kneading it. This will first help you work with the dough. It makes it more manageable without adding flour on top of flour because you really want to keep a soft, moist, um, stretchy texture of a dough. And if you start adding flour as you're kneading it, you're just creating more work for yourself because ultimately you want your dough to be stretchy enough to pass the window pane test or to stretch without tearing. So here I do have a little extra flour. I'm going to lightly flour my surface just to turn it out onto the surface. And I'm going to start kneading by hand. Now the kneading time varies. 15 to 20 minutes is what it usually takes me. I know you might think, whoa, that's a long time. If you want the texture of a soft, chewy, fluffy dinner roll, you got to put in some work. So I'm just going to continue kneading until I get to that stage that I'm looking for. And as you can see, it's not sticking because I let it rest. Okay, so it has literally been almost 20 minutes of kneading, and I want to show you 
Now this is what we call a window pane test. You can stretch the dough thinly enough to see through it and see your fingers. And I am there, so my dough is done. Again, if you are kneading by hand, I'm not forcing you to knead for 20 minutes. You probably could do it in 15. It just depends on the muscle you're putting behind the dough. But it really does pay off when you reach the right texture and stretchiness of your dough. It gives you a better end result. So now I'm just oiling, again, my large bowl. I cleaned it and it's well oiled. I've oiled the top of the dough and I'm just going to cover this in cling film and place it in a warm, non-drafty place. The best spot in my kitchen is my oven. So again, I'm just going to wrap this in cling film and place it right into my oven with a bowl of boiling hot water. I just brought water up to a boil, placed it in a heat proof bowl, and that'll just maintain the warmth. And I'm going to allow the dough to proof for one hour, or basically you're looking for a double in size. So the time will vary. It might take your dough longer to proof double in size, just like it might take you longer or shorter to find that texture when you're kneading. Okay, so my dough has doubled in size. It took an hour. So I am ready to start the next process. I am going to turn the dough out onto my cleaned work surface. By the way, I have some extra flour on the side over there and I will be lightly dusting my work surface because at this point the dough is workable. It's not super sticky so you don't need tons of flour. Again, if you start working too much flour back into your dough, it's gonna change the texture of your end result and you're gonna think, oh no, where did I go wrong? What's wrong? Well, do not work a lot of flour back into the dough. And again, I'm lightly dusting this. This is probably too much. I'm probably gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna scoot some of it to the side because the dough is workable without tons of flour. I don't wanna work tons of flour back into this dough. You work so hard to get the texture you wanted, so you don't wanna change that texture. So I'm basically just going to press the air out of this dough and I'm going to start folding it in on itself. This is going to create texture and layers to this dough. Now, if you don't want to do all the folding, all the dusting, all the moving and pressing, you could just go right ahead and form your dough balls and let it proof again for an hour or so in the oven and bake it. But this step does give you wonderful texture. I mean, if you're going through the trouble of making homemade dough, you might as well just go all the way. <laughs> So I've basically divided them into 12 equal pieces. I weighed them for more even bake time. I have rolled them out 
and I flattened them and rolled them into like a log type roll and now I have them in a lined baking pan with parchment paper. I'm going to allow them to proof once again until they double in size. The time may vary and I'm using the same method. Hot water in a bowl, in my oven, covered. So again, it may take an hour or more to get double in size. It has been one hour and my rolls have doubled in size. So now I am going to take one large scrambled egg and I am going to gently put an egg wash on the tops of my dough balls. This is going to give it that beautiful deep golden brown color that you look for in a soft fluffy dinner roll. So I'm just going to continue adding the egg wash and then I am going to also be preheating my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. It has been 20 minutes and gosh, my house smells so good. And these rolls look divine. So I'm going to remove them from the pan and just slide them even in the parchment paper onto this cooling rack. And this is one of the perks of putting a parchment paper because you can kind of grab it like two little handles and just slide it over to the cooling rack. And I honestly can't wait to show you the texture and fluffy and airiness and chewiness of this roll. This is one of the reasons why I think bread flour really does work. You can still achieve a good texture with all-purpose flour, but I do taste a difference in texture when I use bread flour. And look at this, it's so hot, but I, I just want to show you the inside of this roll. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it and thanks for watching.